There is a special place in the Rocky Mountains that connects nature and nations. The crown of the continent is one of the largest intact landscapes in North America, bridging the United States and Canada, including Glacier National Park and Waterton Lakes National Park. Changing land uses and changing climates now threaten this majestic region. The Round Table on the Crown of the Continent is a groundbreaking effort of people sharing their perspectives to conserve this landscape. In the Crown, we have many different ecosystems. We have water, we, we have air, we have the animals, and, um, and they're as diverse as we are, uh, the people that live here in the Crown. We are people of water, and we are people of the mountains, and we are people of the plains. How right and fitting is it that we address it from lots of different diverse ways because nature itself does so. The magic of the crown is that you have such diversity of folks who care about one large landscape and I think that's unique. And so the round table, you know, when I see the round table, folks come, they've had busy lives where they, where they live or different cultures and they come here and there's a kind of a community melding. So you can't keep me away from the Crown Roundtable Conference every year. I always tell everyone if there's only one regional conference that you're going to attend, you absolutely have to go to the Crown Roundtable because everyone shows up and we have really diverse groups having really important conversations. Coming here and really engaging with the tribes from all over the crown of the continent is absolutely the most important thing that I can, that I can do while I'm here. We try to address a concern. We, we address it spiritually, uh, Sarej Kootenai people. Uh, we address it spiritually first. The tribes often say we look seven generations ahead when we're planning what we're doing. And I think that that's a really fantastic way to approach the work and, and really changes what we're focusing on. We're in this uh, for the long term. This is my son's. He will reap the benefits from this. And that's really what we're doing. That's what we do ranching anyway, is get it to the next generation. You know, keep that moving. The, the way that we've structured the conversations in the most part that I've done the last few years in Southwest Alberta in the Crown is that we, we bring it to the level of, of values and common values. And common values is where people can come together and talk. And water is uh, one of those aspects of the environment that, that pervades everybody's life. It, it goes, it, it's, it's an economic benefit, it's a social concern, it's an aesthetic piece, it's an environmental ecological piece. And water, is a, water in itself is a, is a convener of people. I think the threats to aquatics, uh, to our lakes and rivers, you know, we're the headwaters of the country. And so if we aren't really paying attention to those aquatic invasives, uh, it could be detrimental to our foundation of economics. But again, uh, just living on the land like we do, we have definitely seen uh, in my lifetime even a change in how much drier, you know, we're seeing complete different sort of weather patterns that are coming through. So it is changing sort of the dynamics of how we look at, uh, you know, whether a grazing system or how we irrigate those kind of things. I think climate change is, gonna, is in everybody's best interest, at least have that conversation. Uh, I don't have all the answers, but I think if we aren't talking about it, we're missing a huge part of uh, this part of the country. All of the people that we surveyed said that they've had to change when and where they collect. And so um, a lot of these individuals have been collecting, you know, um, the majority of their life. Some of them have to make adjustments to going out earlier, um, which is, you know, different from what they've had to do in the past. And that's a concern to me. Climate change is such an enormous stressor in itself, as well as exacerbating other existing stressors, that it's really critical for all of us to come together and have those conversations. We bring 
it's very straight scientific data to the round table um, that is represented at the scale of the crown of the continent ecosystem so that the different stakeholders and the different the community culture and conservation pieces of the crown round table the people that represent those values can have a discussion around what our future looks like for that particular species whether it's a native trout species or a grizzly bear Uh, we build boundaries. We build boundaries where boundaries shouldn't exist. And so I'm passionate about the collective interdependency that exists in this extraordinary part of the world. Uh, again, uh, if you're a grizzly bear, if you're groundwater, if you're a river and you're crossing these boundaries, they are just lines in the sand. Well, transboundary, I mean, it is all one ecosystem. It's all, it's all one landscape, and so um, what we're doing north of the border um, really connects to what people are doing south of the border. Um, and of course, the, the processes such as water, um, the animals, they, they don't know there's a border, so it's really important to have a seamless um, transboundary connection. You know, coming to events like the round table, you know, it takes time. And uh, a lot of folks would say it's taking time away from their business, whether it's ranching or, uh, you know, the local fish shop. And is it worth it? Um, I tend to believe it is because uh, if all of us are going to be working in this landscape in the future, uh, we got to change our the way we, we think. And that's, that's taking the time to come here. And to be very honest with you, it makes me more efficient because I'm able to take new tools home. Uh, and when I do that, that frees up time. Shoto, but I've been involved with the Crown Roundtable for the last five, six years uh, in different capacities. And I really want to welcome you here. These are uh, people of like spirit and, and like hearts. And um, I personally just love being here. Um, it's it's uh, it's invigorating. It's it's exciting. And yesterday's uh, uh, portion of the conference, I, I thought, with so many varying views, about living in the crown and caring for the crown, um, I, I thought the organizers were very courageous in the uh, panels that they put together because some of those views were very very different. I was intrigued by them. I, I was interested to hear them. Some I absolutely agreed with, and I know our, our people would. Some I absolutely disagreed with. Um, but how healthy is that to be able to talk about all those different perspectives in our, in our collective homeland? Yeah. Everyone that's here shares this, this common place, and, uh, and, and we are bound by breath to um, to honor this place and to take care of it. So.